A squatter tenant used Zillow rent manager in order to trick landlords into renting her their property and then scam them out of paying rent. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's actually quite similar to an article I covered just a few days ago about a scammer tenant who basically is cheating landlords who became accidental landlords when they decided to move out of state. And it's even taking place in the same two states that the other story I, I covered were. So in the other uh, story, it was about an army officer who lived in Texas, ended up moving to Florida for her job and rented out her apartment to, or I'm sorry, her house to a tenant who basically turned out to be a complete scammer. Well, it's almost an identical story in this situation. Basically, in this story, it's also taking place in Texas, and this family decided they were going to move to Florida for a job opportunity, and guess what? They rented the place out, they moved a tenant up in there, and the tenant ended up being a scammer. So apparently, this is something that is commonly happening in Texas. Fortunately, like I said for the other article, Texas is a place where there are strong property rights and where landlords do get treated with respect. So when this sort of scammer, you know, these situations happen, we can actually get those tenants up out of the property, recover the property, and then get a tenant who is paying rent up in there. So yeah, that's a good thing, but it's still unfortunate that these landlords, they keep having to deal with this sort of situation, you know, and in this case, it's a little bit different in that they ran or they they saw the background they saw the tenant's background history right but that's because the tenant provided them with their background through zillow's rental manager uh software right now i've used zillow rent manager before you know i i when i used to list my properties myself you know before i hired property management i would you know put them up on zillow i put them up on facebook marketplace and zillow actually has background check services built into their rent manager thing for tenants right and so the tenant will send you all their information and then you'll be able to do the tenant screening everything through zillow now there's a problem with that though the tenant in this case could put in fraudulent social security number so that their background information for themselves you know their bad credit history etc doesn't actually pop up and so these landlords got taken advantage of because they didn't do their own background check and instead were relying upon Zillow. And that's kind of a problem. That's kind of a problem. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't rely upon Zillow alone because I thought that might be an issue. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, leave, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. So one, small mom and pop landlords or people who are self-managing, do you still list your properties on Zillow? And if you do, do you go by their background investigation information that they send you for some tenants? Okay. I know it can be more steps and more hoops to jump through if you, you know, have your own background investigation that you have to perform. But seeing as how this can easily be scammed by the tenants, it might be a good idea to do your own background anyway. But anyway, let's get into this article and see what it says. <clears throat> this article is coming from cbsnews.com and it says, Serial squatter strikes again, threatening to leave Rowlett woman homeless. Yeah, another story about a landlord who could end up homeless. I mean, I hate reading these stories. You know, you're the property owner and you get taken advantage of by a tenant who is literally stealing from you. Yet the police, they don't file criminal charges against these people. Anyway, let's get into the story. It was the perfect first home for Jessica and Colin Davis, a four bedroom with a pool on a quiet corner in Rowlett. But six months later, Jessica's job unexpectedly transferred to Florida, forcing them to move. The Davises didn't want to sell, so they decided to rent to a woman they knew as Reyes Rybal. Davis said she met her through Zillow's rental program. They identified her, they verified her, her records came out clean, said Davis. Davis said Ryball asked to move in a few days early, saying the hotel she and her son were staying at was unsafe. The deposit and first month's rent payments showed as pending online, so Davis said yes. But a few days later, the checks bounced. The bank said the payments were made from a closed account. So yeah, 
you know, we, we start to see problems immediately. Now, these are, you know, accidental landlords. These are small mom and pop landlords who probably only own one rental property. OK, so they didn't wait for the check to clear. They just deposited it. They said, oh, well, you know, it's pending. Everything is good. Everything is good. No, no, it's not good. You know, the check bounced. <laughs> and now you're sitting there, the tenants in the property and you have no money. So you have to go through because you have signed a lease with this tenant. You have to go through the full eviction process on this person and they get at least the first month of rent for free. So, you know, the first thing would be to say, OK, we're going to wait until the check clears for sure. You know, we're not going to go ahead and uh, let you move up in there until the date specified. But, um, you know, moving in and letting you move in by letting them move in a few days early and not waiting for that check to clear, you were asking for additional problems. <clears throat> Davis said after days of getting the runaround from Rival, she began digging into her new tenant. The only name that I could come up with was a 72 year old individual. That person she found did have a relative with a name she'd seen before, Heather Schwab. It was the name on the first message Davis received through Zillow. When she asked her renter about it, Davis said she told, uh, she said she told, oh no, that's just my friend's name. I was using her Zillow account. So immediately, you know, we start getting to run around, we start getting lies from this person. And when they start uh, doing a lot of checks, they say, well, you know, all your info is coming back to a 72 year old person. What's the deal with that? Well, if you had done the checks yourself, right, then you would have already known all this. This is, you know, you got scammed by somebody who is using other people's accounts, other people's information through the Zillow system in order to rent this apartment and probably didn't even give you their real name. That's how bad this is. You know, like I'm, I'm, I know I'm being critical. I was critical on the, the other lady, too, who got taken by the squatter. But, she, you know, you watch the video for that other lady. She took full responsibility. She knew she had screwed up. Right. And, you know, it's a it's a learning experience. But I don't want to see this happen to other landlords. You know, I've been scammed. I have been scammed before. I have lost money before. A lot of us small landlords have lost money and been scammed before. And we hate to see it happen to other landlords like ourselves because, you know, these tenants, they will take advantage of you. They will take advantage. They will take your money. They don't give a darn about you or anything except for themselves. They're greedy and selfish. That's what these scammers are. And we have to make sure we cannot allow them to win. We can't let them into our unit in the first place. And the best way to do that, we have to cover our butts. Okay, we have to cover our butts by doing thorough tenant screening. Don't trust that garbage that Zillow is giving you. Instead, demand to see the person's driver's license. Okay, I made a copy of every single tenant that I had's driver's license. So that I knew, you know, their name, their date of birth, their driver's license number. You know, I had all of that information written down. So I knew these were the people that are actually living inside my unit and not just some name that they gave me, not just some background that Zillow threw at me. And then I made them all go through TransUnion Smart Move and do their background through that. OK. And when <laughs> they can't they can't get around that one, because if I pull up a different name, you know, if I'm looking at a background investigation, it has a different name on it than that driver's license they gave me. Well, they, they just tried to scam me and you instantly get tossed out of my prospective tenant list. So, you know, there's so many ways that they, that they could have caught this. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. You know, like I, I feel bad for these people, you know, when you lose thousands of dollars to scammers, you know, you you realize that, yeah, these people, they were probably naive, they're inexperienced, et cetera. You know, they're not dumb. You know, it's not their fault. But, you know, the things that you have to do the very next time to make sure that this doesn't happen again. <clears throat> but Davis kept digging online. That's when she found CBS News Texas reports from 2017 and 2018 detailing the many evictions of Heather and William Schwab. At the time, several homeowners said the couple was exploiting the eviction process to live rent free. One attorney had dubbed them serial squatters, saying the Schwabs knew more about eviction laws than many lawyers. So, yeah, they ended up with one of the worst serial squatters in the entire area. 
okay? Somebody they had already written newspaper articles about. That is horrible, okay? These people have already had newspaper articles and TV um, news clips about them because they are so malicious and so evil and they've cheated so many landlords out of money and you ended up with them up in your property. So, you know, I, I really, really, you know, I feel for you. But, you know, this, this is, like I said, a learning lesson a very important lesson. And, you know, the lesson goes back to tenant screening. The lesson goes back to don't trust anyone. The lesson goes back to, you know, just, you know, double check, triple check, you know, quadruple check every single thing. We're talking about a very, very expensive investment here. Most properties are costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we cannot just you know, willy nilly do this. This is a business. This is how we must operate. We can't be friends with the tenants. We can't be kind. We can't, you know, uh, turn our backs or ignore little, small, minor issues. We have to do everything in order to make sure that we are safe.